Hello everyone, welcome to uh, this video in the SPSS series and this is where we're going to be creating a histogram, a complete histogram using uh, class intervals using SPSS 26. So in one of the videos I showed you how to create a simple histogram just based on the data given. I'm going to show you quickly that and then I'm going to show you how to change the shape of the histogram based on the class interval or the classes as they are called. So to do a histogram of course there are several methods to do that in SPSS. One of them is going to descriptive statistics, going to frequencies, selecting the variable that we need and then of course click on charts and you can choose between bar graph, bar graph or histogram and you can also choose show normal curve on the histogram you can choose if you want to show any statistics but we're not doing that right now that's done in another video you can see how we can do descriptive statistics choose display frequency table click OK and you will have the histogram the problem with this histogram is that SPSS picks every single value, doesn't create class interval, picks every single value in your data and see how many times it appears. So you see you have 20, 21, 23, 24. It doesn't give me a class interval. Even the chart, the histogram, you can see that I have every single data value. There is no interval from 20 to 25 or 20 to 24, then 25 to 29 and so on. So to avoid that, to have a full histogram with whatever class interval I have in my data, first I have to transform this data into class intervals. To do that, we need to click on transform and visual binding. I'm going to add this variable. So I'm going to repeat. Let's click cancel. We're going to go to transform and then visual binding. I'm going to click on age to add it and I'm going to click on continue. So now it detects my data and it shows me that this minimum value is 20. The maximum value is 39 and it shows me all these class intervals based on what it did. So first thing I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to call this bin value classes or intervals. Then you can come over here and specify the values and the label that you want or we can just go here to make cut points and specify what I want. So now I can specify the first cut point. Cut point is the upper limit in your first class interval. So the first value is 20, the minimum value. I can choose the first cut point at 20. Then I can choose how many cut points I want, how many intervals. Let's say I want six intervals. So you see it gives me the widths automatically, takes it and finds the widths. If I'm not happy with that, and I'm not because the last cut point is 35 and the maximum value I have over here is 39. So I can say, okay, let's make it 5, the class interval. And you can see that the last cut point is 45. Or I can make it 4. And you can see that the last cut point is 40, which makes sense to me. It's above the maximum. So now all my class intervals are uh, inclusive, they are mutually exclusive, and they are collectively exhaustive. Okay, so click apply, and you will see now that this is what we have for the values. So the first cut point is 20, next is 24, then 28, then 32, then 36, then 40. If you want to change the label, and that's later on, uh, so for the time being, I'm just going to 
explain what you can put here. It's what display what's displayed on the histogram as the class interval. So you can go, for example, 16 to 20, then 21 to 24, right? Or you can go here less than 20, then you could go 21 to 24, then 25 to 28, and so on. So this is your class interval, the upper and lower class limit, or you can just call them group one, group two. It's up to you what you want to call them. Of course, it makes sense to do it this way, right? The class interval, make sure they are mutually exclusive so they don't overlap. This is just a label, so it's not going to affect what you have, okay? So 33 to 36, just quickly entering that, 37 to 40. And you can see now it puts these values for you. So now you can see that this is the first, second, and so on. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to tell you that it will create a new variable in your data beside age. So we're going to click Yes. And now, if I minimize this, you will see that I have age and I have classes. And it creates the number of classes that I have, which is six. And each value now is assigned to a class depending on where does it fit. So now when I go to Analyze and I go to Frequencies, instead of age, I'm going to select classes as the variable. I don't have to change anything because I already choose histogram and show normal curve. All I have to do is click OK now and you will see that this is what I have. So it's less than 20, I have two. Now between 20 and 24 versus the previous it shows me 20, 21, 22, 23 and the histogram looks better now because I have what? The classes instead of every single value. If you compare it to the first histogram, this is more crowded because this includes all the value between 20 and 39. Here, I have the classes now from less than 20, 21 to 24, and so on. And this is the frequencies for each one of them. Okay. So you can see here that if you missed a value because the class interval that you did is not uh, collectively exhaustive, then it shows you that there is a missing value here. So you go back to your data and you see which is the missing value, where is it? Either add another class interval at the bottom or on the top. Okay, so that's how we do histogram in SPSS using class interval, not just every single data in the data set that we have. And you can see even the frequency table here, it lists all the values from 20 to 39. Here, it lists on the class interval. So that's a better looking histogram. Again, it depends on what you're doing. If you require class interval, then you have to uh, tell SPSS to create this class interval. And as I showed you, you can choose the limits that you want. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to look for more videos on SPSS and Excel.